With the launch of the Xbox One on November 22nd, the last of the next-gen consoles finally arrived, which meant that a lot of people are putting their poor old 360s and PS3s and even their Wii's to rest for good. Not me, but I'm sure there are some people out there doing it. Anyways, in honor of the release of the new consoles and to ring out the last generation, we're going to take a look at the 10 biggest, best, and most important games to come out from the last console generation. But before we get too far into that, there are a couple of things I need to mention. First, seeing as how this list pertains directly to the last console generation, that means every game on this list must have appeared on at least one of the last generation's consoles, meaning it must have shown up on either Xbox 360, PlayStation 3, or the Nintendo Wii. PC exclusives, no matter how great or important they are, are excluded from this list. Sorry Half-Life 2, that means you. Additionally, as this game pertains to specific games, that means that collections are also off this list. Meaning the orange box. Meaning still Half-Life 2. Sorry. Number 10, Super Mario Galaxy. To start this list off, we'll go with a Wii exclusive, and one of the first Wii games I ever played. Super Mario Galaxy was a huge deal when it came out in 2007. It was pretty much the Mario game. Pretty much the Wii game to play, period. Everyone who had a Wii had Super Mario Galaxy, because it did so much to the Mario formula. Think about it, that game managed to implement motion control into a Mario game better than most other Wii games have ever managed to do since. It had some of the strongest level design of any modern platformer, period. It was gorgeous for the time, it had a great soundtrack. Everybody loved Super Mario Galaxy. It pretty much became the killer app for the Nintendo Wii for years. Number 9, Gears of War 2. Now I know what a lot of you are thinking. <laughs> Gears of War 2, one of the most important games. <laughs> What's it on here for? The biggest bromance? No, you're an idiot. It's on here for being quite possibly the most important co-op game of the last generation. Think about it, Gears of War 2 invented Horde Mode. How many games do you see nowadays that have a Horde Mode ripoff? Pretty much any game with cooperative gameplay has a Horde Mode ripoff. Everything is a Horde Mode ripoff. There have been entire games made since Gears 2 that were Horde Mode ripoffs. Even Call of Duty went as far as to rip Horde with Survival and Modern Warfare 3. ODST's Firefight was Microsoft just rebranding Horde with Aliens instead of Locust. You were fighting the Covenant this time, and it was played in first person. But Firefight was even Horde. How many other games can say that they created a mode that pretty much every game in their genre since has copied in some way? Nice work, Delta. And Rook. Carmine. You did good. Well, thanks, Sergeant Phoenix. Control, this is Delta. Enemy threat eliminated. Over. Number 8. Wii Sports. Now I know, I know, a lot of you out there just spat your soda all over your computer screen when you heard me say that. Wii Sports? That's just a dumb little kid's game, right? Yeah, maybe, but it was also the first time you managed to get your grandmother to touch a video game. Wii Sports was the first time that people could get family and friends that would never touch a video game under any other circumstances to get up and play one. Things like bowling and baseball and boxing are familiar to anyone, and they're fun for anyone whether they're a gamer or not. It was the first game that managed to get five-year-old little Timmy playing with his mom and his 70-year-old grandfather all at the same time. Not only that, but it was also the packing game for the Wii, meaning that no matter what kind of gamer you were, that was the first game you played. And you know what? When you first bought your Wii, no matter how simple those games were, the first time you swung a Wii remote and saw your on-screen Wii swing his baseball bat, that was pretty freaking awesome. Yeah. Number 9. 
Number seven, Portal. Portal was a big game. It came out in 2007 on its own on Steam and is part of the Orange Box on Xbox 360 and PlayStation 3. No one had heard of it. No one really knew what it was about. It was a small little pack-in game. No one thought it would be all that special. And then they played it. Then they shot a portal. Then they met GLaDOS. And then they fell in love. Portal was one of those games that no one really expected to be such a hit, but once they played it, everyone thought it was genius. And really it was. The gameplay mechanic of shooting portals on different surfaces to launch yourself across, shoot little energy balls into collection things, it was, it, it was unlike anything anyone had ever played before, and it's still unlike anything anyone's really played since. It introduced some great characters, like GLaDOS and Chell, had a great sense of humor, kind of dark and sarcastic and evil, but still funny nonetheless, and it had one of the best outro songs, well, ever. Seriously, if you don't like Still Alive, you have no soul. I'm sorry, someone had to tell me. Turn back. The portal will open in three, two, one. Number 6, Uncharted 2. The Wii's had an exclusive on here, the Xbox 360 has had an exclusive, now it's the PlayStation 3's turn. When Uncharted 2 released, it was one of the biggest games on the PlayStation 3. And for good reason, it had one of the most intense and cinematic opening scenes in any game ever. The train dangling off the cliff as you slowly come to realize the predicament of your situation, and you're forced to climb up the train as it literally falls apart over the ledge. Yeah, few games have opened quite like that. But that intro sequence isn't the only reason people love Uncharted 2. The Uncharted series is also renowned for being pretty much the closest thing video games have to an Indiana Jones, and for good reason. The character of Nathan Drake is just a likable character. Most of the characters are, in fact, and that's one of the franchise's biggest strengths, is creating realistic, likable characters that you want to get behind and that you're interested in. It was a huge step forward in cinematic storytelling for games. It sold well, it got great reviews, it was a big deal. Number 5, Halo 3. And cue the PlayStation fanboys arguing about how Halo sucks and doesn't deserve to be on the list, and cue the Microsoft fanboys for arguing about how Halo is the best franchise ever, and no, your dumb PS3 game doesn't deserve to be on the list. You're both wrong, Halo 3 deserves a place on the list, so did the PlayStation 3 games, that's not what we're here about. Halo 3 was a huge game when it released in 2007 for the Xbox 360. Much like Super Mario Galaxy for the Wii, it was the game to own, the campaign to play, the multiplayer to be on. It was huge, and for good reason. The single player campaign was well paced, well balanced, polished, had an excellent story, and more importantly, finished up the Master Chief trilogy. Granted, Halo 4 came around and ruined all of that, but I don't even like to talk about that game, so let's move on. Beyond the campaign, Halo 3 refined Halo's multiplayer to a razor edge, making for one of the most entertaining multiplayer experiences on the console. Add on top of that the introduction of Forge, which was and still is one of the deepest content creation tools on the platform, and you've got an important game. Now, granted, some have argued that Halo 3's campaign didn't live up to the older games in the series, or that Forge mode was too clunky and hard to use, but it doesn't matter because it was still Halo 3. It still managed to improve everything that the previous Halos had done before, and it managed to be one of the biggest and most played games on the Xbox 360. It deserves to be here. Game over. Number 4, The Walking Dead. The Walking Dead had a lot to live up to when it released in April of last year. 
It was based on one of the most popular franchises at the time, and licensed video games don't tend to have the best track record. So who would have thought then that a licensed video game, a licensed adventure video game of all things, a genre which hasn't really been seen in the last 15 years, would then turn around and win several Game of the Year awards for 2012. The Walking Dead defied everyone's expectations by providing one of the best narrative experiences we've seen in a very long time. The choices you made genuinely felt like they mattered. They affected how characters reacted to you in the long run, and it was something that we really haven't seen all that much in games before. Of course, that was helped by some excellent writing and voice acting, and really that's what makes this game so special. It's not a great gameplay experience, really. The point-and-click adventure parts are fairly straightforward and not all that exciting, but your interactions with other characters, the way they unfold, and getting to see that characters genuinely change their opinions of you based on your choices, it was something that had players on the edge of their seats through the entire five-episode experience. It was unlike anything people had played before. So, what did you get? A lot of stuff. We're fine, by the way. Nice work. This'll keep us going. Number three, Red Dead Redemption. Now, I know there are some people that will say when you're talking about Rockstar's masterpiece of the last generation, that it should be Grand Theft Auto 4 or Grand Theft Auto 5, but frankly I disagree. I think Red Dead Redemption has to be their best game of the last generation. Why? For starters, it was an excellent western game, something that hasn't really been seen ever. Western games aren't a very common genre in the first place, and to see one done this well is even more rare. The story, the characters, the world, everything about this game was typical Rockstar, with a tightly written and interesting narrative that you could blow through in 20 hours if you were determined to, but with a huge world filled with side activities to do if you really wanted to dive in and spend dozens and dozens of hours exploring it. Red Dead Redemption was one of those games unlike anything you played at the time. It took the Grand Theft Auto formula, which was already extremely well made, and tweaked it just enough with horse riding and different mechanics to fit the era, and made, in my opinion, one of the best games of the last console generation. Number 2. Bioshock. Would you kindly. Three little words that ended up becoming the centerpiece to one of the biggest and most memorable plot twists in gaming history. Bioshock was a landmark for a lot of reasons. Sure, the gameplay was fun and played different than most of the first-person shooters out there, but that's not why everyone loved it. No, everyone loved Bioshock because of the story it told and the way that it was told. The actual events that take place for the player unfold much like any other game, in sequence, during gameplay. But all of the backstory of Rapture and its citizens is told through audio logs, through scribblings on the wall, environmental storytelling done better than any game that came before it, and any game that has come since. The way that that backstory of the characters and Rapture and what happened during its collapse is told allows the player to piece things together for themselves, forming their own story about the characters, about Rapture, about the story, and, and about what, everything that happened. It allowed the player to engage in the story, to think about everything they'd found and figure things out for themselves. It allowed a player to walk away from the game with a totally different understanding and idea of the story from another player, and that's something few games can boast. An intruder! Before we reveal the game that got the top spot, I'd like to go over some honorable mentions. Here we go. Honorable mentions go out to Left 4 Dead, Heavy Rain, Limbo, Braid, Fallout 3, Skyrim, Twilight Princess, Dishonored, Mass Effect, Little Big Planet, God of War 3, and Grand Theft Autos 4 and 5. And now, taking the number one spot on our list is... Drumroll, please... 
Call of Duty 4 Modern Warfare. Now I know all the COD haters out there are going to be jumping down my throat, screaming and raging about how much they hate Call of Duty and how it's full of nothing but annoying little squeakers and tryhards and no-scopers and blah 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 blah. That may all be true now, but back when Call of Duty 4 came out, it was huge and it changed everything. And the only people that can argue against that are quite frankly living in denial. Call of Duty 4 is a hugely important game. For starters, its campaign remains one of the best in the franchise. Sure, it seems kind of generic in retrospect, but that's because most of the first-person shooters out there just tried to copy Call of Duty's formula. The story itself wasn't that bad when it came out. But the big reason Call of Duty 4's campaign is so no noteworthy is for all the set pieces it included. That first mission where you're getting off of the sinking cargo ship in the middle of a storm, that had people on the edge of their seat like no game before it. And what about that opening credits sequence where you're placed behind the camera of a Middle Eastern president as he is captured by rebels, tied up, thrown in the back of a limousine, driven to an execution point, and promptly shot in the face by an insurgent leader on live television? I'm sorry, but if that didn't have your jaw down on the floor the first time you saw that, you are a horrible human being and you have no soul. Or what about when the nuclear bomb went off in the last American campaign mission? That was the first time you'd ever seen your player character die in a first-person shooter. That was unheard of. That was a big deal. But, of course, as big as the campaign was, the real reason everyone owes a huge debt to Call of Duty 4 is the multiplayer. Pretty much every multiplayer game that has come out since has been building off of the same general framework as Call of Duty 4, because it pretty much invented everything. A dedicated leveling system where you earn XP for kills, which is then used to rank up, which in turn unlocks new weapons and abilities? Check. The ability to create custom loadouts with your own selection of guns, attachments, grenades, etc. Check. A perk system that allows the player to enhance their abilities with special techniques and tactics? Check. It's all there, and we owe it all to Call of Duty 4. First-person shooters, and probably multiplayer games in general, would not be nearly as huge as they are right now without Call of Duty 4. Love Call of Duty or hate it, everyone that plays shooters owes this game a huge debt. Think of this arm, I repeat. And there you have it, ladies and gentlemen, people of the world, the top 10 biggest, most important, and best games of the last console generation. Now, I know there were countless great games from the last generation that couldn't have a place on this list, so if there's a game that you think I left out that deserved a place on the list, be sure to let me know in the comments down below. Be sure to give a like and a favorite, maybe share the video if you really enjoyed it, but regardless, my name is Alec, or Alaman98, and thanks for watching. Have a great day. The enrichment center reminds you that the weighted companion cube will never threaten to stab you and, in fact, cannot speak.